I've waited a long time to make this video. Apple's new fancy glasses have finally been announced, and we've known about this thing for a good long while. For years, it's been well known in tech circles that Apple has been working on an augmented virtual reality platform. And for the past few months, it's been suspected that this new headset would be shown off at the 2023 Worldwide Developers Conference. And it was. But even though most of the details of this device leaked out a long time ago, I understand that for a lot of people, this announcement was something of a surprise. It's gotten quite the reaction online. Or at least I'm assuming that's the case. To be completely honest, I don't use social media. So I have no idea what the general public thinks about this thing. But I imagine people are divided. I'm assuming most people are saying that it's too expensive because <laughs> it is pretty pricey. Now, I don't know what your opinion personally is on the device, but here's mine. This headset will change the world. Now, I don't know to what degree it will do that or how long it will take. I'm trying to keep this vague because frankly, I am scared that in 20 years, people will look back on this video like it's aged like milk. Is this headset gonna be the next iPhone or the next Google Glass? Will it finally make VR mainstream or is this industry just doomed to fail? Here's my guess. Every time Apple enters a market, they redefine that industry. Now, I'm not saying that the products Apple makes are just so incredible and they're so innovative that they change society. I'm saying that every time Apple makes a new product, the tech industry does change. I'm not an Apple fanboy by any means, but from a purely business perspective, from a tech history perspective, from looking at the numbers on the graphs, I think it's safe to assume that Apple's VR AR ambitions are not something to take lightly. The MP3 player existed well before the iPod, but today most people just remember the iPod. The smartphone, that existed way before the iPhone. It was a budding industry with its own set of players and winners and losers, and none of that matters because today most people think that Steve Jobs just walked up onto that stage and invented this thing. Tablet computers existed before the iPad, and smartwatches were out there well before the Apple Watch. The reason tech people are looking at this headset with so much interest is because it's interesting. It is the first major product launched by Apple in a long time. Sure, they might have made a set-top TV box and some headphones, but for the most part, they haven't really done a whole lot in the past 20 years or so. I mean, sure, you had the watch, but that was more of like an accessory for the iPhone. Before that, you had the iPad, which at the time especially, it was just a big iPhone. And of course, preceding all of this was the iPhone. So this headset is the first major new product line for Apple since the iPhone. And that's not a coincidence. From what we can tell, Apple wants this to be the replacements for the iPhone. Not this headset specifically, but in 10 years or 15 years or 20 years, when these things are much, much cheaper, much smaller and more powerful and have better battery life, Apple seems to be betting that people will choose glasses over smartphones. For at least the past decade, our entire civilization seems to be driven by this singular device, and to think that anything could replace it is a bit outlandish, especially for those of us who are Younger, depending on your age, you might remember the reaction to the original iPhone when that was first announced. It was not positive. I remember my third grade teacher telling our class that the iPhone was just a stupid, useless, expensive gadget made for people with more money than sense. The smartphone, that's a gimmicky piece of techno jewelry that will never catch on. Now, I don't think my third grade teacher said those exact words, but that was the sentiment at the time. It wasn't uncommon to hear people say, wow, the iPhone is stupid. Apple's gonna ruin itself with this garbage. But I assume most of you already knew that because this story has taken on something of a, a feeling of mythology or legend. I always hear like, how absurd is it that in 2007, people thought that the smartphone would be a failure. Ha <laughs> ha, those people were so stupid. And it's like, yeah, I get it. They were wrong. These people were about as wrong as you can get. 
the iPhone did not fail. The smartphone did not fail. In fact, it's the most successful consumer good in human history. More people own smartphones than cars or refrigerators or televisions. A vast majority of the human race from all corners of the planet, of all demographics, own a smartphone. So it makes sense that we look back and laugh at the iPhone detractors, but I have to admit, this story has been a bit distorted. It's really easy to look back and laugh at people who laughed at the iPhone, but hindsight is 2020. You gotta think, when the iPhone was first announced, this wasn't the introduction of the smartphone. This was just a new smartphone. And the original iPhone, especially by today's standards, was kinda stupid. This didn't support 4G connectivity or 3G connectivity. You were not going to want to browse the web away from a Wi-Fi connection, which wasn't guaranteed in most locations. And downloading apps? Well, there was no app store. Like some people made some third party stuff, sure, but the original iPhone was just not much more than an iPod PDA that could take phone calls. And it still cost four times as much as a normal cell phone. And when it launched, it wasn't a massive success. I mean, mild success, maybe, but it took years for this thing to take off. But within half a decade, you know, the smartphone went from novelty to necessity. So the question is, will the same thing happen with these glasses? In 10 years, if these kind of things are as cheap as a standard phone, if they are as thin and lightweight as sunglasses with plentiful content and all day battery life, will they replace the smartphone? I think yes and no. Now I'm almost certain that 20 years from now, people will be watching videos like this one on fancy glasses. In fact, I think that some people born today will never buy a television. If the 2020s will be defined by vertical video, I see no reason why the 2030s might not be defined by 3D video. And I wouldn't be surprised if by the 2040s, a majority of Americans own a headset. But I still don't think they're gonna replace the smartphone. The smartphone special, it has changed billions of people's lives. Outside of America or the Europe or Australia or maybe a Japan, there are a lot of people who are poor, a lot of people who can't afford things. And these devices will provide all the entertainment these people will ever need. They allow instant communication and they elevate the standard of living by magnitudes for billions of people. Billions of people who probably will not be willing to spend their meager earnings anytime soon on a pair of fancy glasses. I'm sure that within the next 30 years, prices might drop, but considering all the eye sensors and the cameras and the fancy stuff that goes into this, this thing, it's hard for me to imagine that at any point within the next half century, these glasses will cost less than a smartphone. But I'm getting ahead of myself. As for right now, this thing, the Vision Pro, is really only one of the headsets that was rumored. We knew there was a somewhat bulky VR-AR hybrid that was going to be prohibitively expensive, but supposedly a much cheaper, thinner pair of AR-only glasses are planned to be released by the company in the next few years. I assume a lot of people are fixated on this price. $3,500, that's, that's a pretty penny. But to be honest, if you didn't already know it was going to cost this much before the conference, or if this is a deal breaker for you, then this specific product was probably not made for you. Think about it. This thing costs $3,500. It has a battery life that's two hours long with an external battery pack attached. It probably won't have a ton of compelling software available at launch, and it's probably going to have more than its fair share of bugs. I don't think Apple wants everybody to line up and buy this thing. It's mostly made for hardcore tech enthusiasts and developers. The people buying this are the beta testers. They will inform Apple about all the issues that they have with the product, providing valuable feedback for the future cheaper, thinner iterations of the headset that will be designed for the general public in the coming years. The real point of this thing is to just get it in developers' hands so they can start making apps. Apple wants a bunch of stuff on that app store by like 2027, when your uncle is willing to tr take his chances on one of those new fancy headsets. Building a new platform like this is gonna take a long time. And this is nothing but the first iteration of a product line that I'm sure Apple intends on supporting for the next several decades. 
So some of you might be wondering, why is Apple doing this? Uh, money, money is the reason, yes. But they already have the iPhone. Why waste time with a new product that would replace the old one? Apple is worth a lot of money. Like it's the most valuable corporation on the planet, but most of that is reliant on the success of just the iPhone. But the iPhone sells a lot to such a degree that it's kind of been a problem iPhone sales have been stagnating because they reached peak market saturation. If you're a publicly traded company, how do you really continue growth once everybody knows about your product or has your product or the services you provide? Well, you just gotta start over. And I'm sure that's the plan. For the first few years, this VR headset thing will seem like a novelty. And then it'll be surprising when people actually start buying them. But I'm sure this is a plan that's been probably a decade in the making. I wouldn't be surprised if Apple's move to its own silicon was in some part inspired by these plans. Low power consumption with a lot of power it makes sense for a headset. This is also probably why Marky Mark and Meta have been acting so weird for the past few years. They know that if Apple is jumping into VR and AR, there's a real chance that this will be a multi-trillion dollar market. And they want to get in, they, they want a piece of that pie. As for this headset specifically, I don't know. I, I have no doubts that Apple will deliver a functional and useful device. My opinions on Apple's policies and practices aside, they tend to make things that just work. And I'm really hoping, I'm genuinely hoping this works. But if this actually performs like the promotional material, if the image is this stable, if I can make my videos using nothing but this headset, awesome. But, e but even if not, it doesn't matter. The reason this product announcement is so exciting for me and probably somebody else is because in the future, we might look back on it. Like it's like it's the big old, you know, one more thing. Like, like when, when Jobs announced the iPhone, maybe this was a big historical moment. We don't know. We don't know if VR, AR is going to take off, if it's going to be the future, but it could be. And if it's going to happen, this is it. 